You're listening to Catholic Sprouts, the daily podcast for Catholic kids that strives to plant seeds of faith. Hey there, Sprouts. Today is Tuesday, July 9th. Today is also the feast day of some heroic martyrs from China. We celebrate all of the martyrs from China. There are many, many of them. But in particular, we celebrate St. Augustine Rong and his companions. Now, St. Augustine was a priest. He was a diocesan priest who lived in the year 1815 in China. Missionaries had been coming to China for hundreds of years before this, but at this time, the non-Christian government began to crack down on Christianity. They arrested hundreds of Christians, and when they refused to renounce their faith, they were martyred in horrific ways. In fact, one of the young companions that was with Father Augustine when he was martyred was a man named Chai. He was only 18 years old, and as the story goes, he had both of his arms cut off during a very brutal martyrdom. But even after he had lost both of his arms, he said, every piece of my flesh, every drop of my blood will tell you that I am Christian. Just a heroic witness, not only by these two men, St. Augustine and the young man named Chai, but so many others, many of whom we don't even know their names, but yet they offer this incredible witness to what we should be able to, to give up, to sacrifice for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, this week on the Catholic Sprouts podcast, we are talking about the kerygma, specifically the fourth truth, that we need to reorient our our lives, that we need to believe in the gospel, which is the good news of God's saving love. Before we tackle the big three steps that this includes, join me in our July prayer, Anima Christi. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, embolden me. Water from the side of Christ, strengthen me. Good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Never permit me to be parted from you. From the evil enemy, defend me. At the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to you, that with your saints I may praise you for age upon age. Amen. So as we said yesterday, this truth of the kerygma demands that we respond to God who has made the first move, that we respond by reorienting our lives away from sin to his mercy and to belief. So the first step of this reorientation is to leave sin behind. Now, there's a very famous gospel passage that talks about cutting off parts of our body, right? If your sin, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it out. If your eye causes you to sin, poke it out. Now, that might be literal for some people, but for most of us, we wouldn't look and see, well, this is the hand that makes me sin or that is the eye. Instead, it might be an object in our life. For example, if you're, uh, if you have some sort of technological device that you spend too much time on, or that you give in to using in the wrong way, it very likely might be something that you need to cut out of your lives. Another thing to consider as we leave behind sin are the people that fill our lives. We are called to be missionaries to go out and to evangelize the world. But from the very beginning, Christians have lived in communities. And this is particularly true in places where missionaries reached. So consider China. In China, most of the people were not Christian. But as the church grew, it formed little communities where Christians would gather to support each other, to have access to the sacraments. And for this reason... There are whole groups of martyrs that a whole community of Christians would be found. They would give each other strength to to be bold, to face death by defending the name of Jesus Christ. Now, why did they do this? Why did they move away from even family and friends to live in a community that's only Christians? 
Well, they did this very much in response to this truth of a kerygma, to reorient their lives to Jesus. Now, if you have a good friend who is doing some sort of sin that you are trying to walk away from and to cut out of your life, it is very hard to keep that commitment and also to keep that friendship. And so we need to love people, we need to serve people, but especially when we're in this tender stage of just committing our lives to Jesus, of just accepting that I need to clear the sin out of my life, we oftentimes need to clear out some toxic relationships. And so Sprouts, hopefully you're on this journey with me where you are really thinking, have I committed this gospel to the center part of my life? And so think, have you left behind sin? You wonder about these two things. Number one, is there an object in your life that you really should get rid of that is leading you to sin, leading you away from Jesus? And also, is there a friendship in your life that is not leading you closer to God, but perhaps the opposite? It's summertime, so sometimes we get into these neighborhood friendships that aren't necessarily always the best. So just realize that you need to make some choices for yourself so that you can become a true follower of Jesus. We're not leaving these people behind. We're not saying they're helpless. We're just saying that we might need other types of community around us to follow Jesus better. That's it for Catholic Sprouts today. We'll be back tomorrow. But until then, continue to grow in your faith and truly sprout into the beautiful creation that God created you to be. Thanks for joining us once again. And I'd like to remind you that Catholic Sprouts can now be found inside the Hallow app to try out Hallow or to add it to all the wonderful things you are already listening to there. Simply check the notes for this podcast episode and find a link that will give you a 30-day free trial of Hallow. This podcast is part of the Spoke Street Network. For more great podcasts, visit Spokestreet.com.